How you doing? In this video, we're going to talk about the aspects of Shimsong. So Shimsong, or form 13, right? So that's our 13th uh, Sangsu form, is allegedly like the culmination of, again, all of your training with Sangsu. Uh, so back in the day, in the old ways, uh, in the old ways, we used to do it, I guess, was quite a few years, again, uh, probably more than a decade by now. Uh, for first degree, we used to go up through Shimsong. Uh, to, to, uh, to train for first degree, uh, but now it's been kind of split, right? So we kind of go up through eight uh, for first degree and up through Shimsong for second degree. So uh, in the current way of things, um, if you know Shimsong, that means you're probably training for second degree. So this will be a nice culmination of the style. Uh, it is a longer form. Uh, there are a lot of new-ish uh, techniques that are kind of in this one as well, um, as well as a few new aspects uh, to play with. Uh, well, so let's jump right into it. I'm not really going to count uh, the introduction as one of the three uh, things I want to introduce, um, but the, the, the draw, right? so the very beginning of the form, is also new, right? So the idea of that one is, so at least the, the premise, right? So we talk about the premise of Form 10 specifically, uh, but the premise of Shimsong is it's more or less you uh, against a, a an army, more or less, uh, but there's a clear divide, right? So it's not like... Uh, pretty much any other form, you're kind of in the middle of the fray. Uh, Shimsung starts pretty much like, all right, here's my side, there's, there's the other side, I'm going to enter the fray and work my way through. Uh, so the premise of it is the very beginning takes a while, it's kind of like working yourself up, right? So it's not simply like down, like in Form 9, it's not really any of those other really quick draws. The idea here is like, all right, <laughs> getting into the mindset, there's the enemy, I'm going to take a good amount of time to kind of like, you know, gather your energy if you want to think of it that way, get ready for combat, kind of get ready, one step getting ready, and then you're going to start going that way. So the introduction is just kind of neat, right? Uh, it, it is newer, right? So you don't really have that many slow introductions. I believe this might be the first one that's really a slow introduction. Um, the next slow one is also a Yellow 2, right? So Yellow 2 is also pretty, uh, pretty slow. Um, right, so at least in terms of, you know, uh, set, setting the scene, uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is actually the long key up, right? Uh, now I might also call it Kiai because I'm also used to kind of like using those two interchangeably. Uh, key up is usually associated with Korean. Um, but the idea there is like, so I'm here, I'm starting to get my momentum, right? And like, so both emotional and, you know, physical, you know, physiological momentum. And I'm going to start charging in uh, with a long key up, right? Now we do use uh, this long key up in future forms, right? So uh, actually the next one is also Yeto 2, uh, which is only two forms away, right? So we have Yeto 1 and Yeto 2. Uh, but it's kind of like a fun idea, right? So uh, this is the first time we have it, but it's not a unique concept in the world of swordsmanship. Uh, now just to kind of bring things in, just because again, I've had time to kind of contemplate a little bit. So the other, uh, the other martial art does a lot of these long kiai and has like a slightly different purpose, right? Um, is actually kendo. Uh, so for example, have you ever seen, um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name, uh, Kirikaishi? Right, uh, which I am not going to pretend I'm going to remember fully. Uh, but the idea is you're here and you're constantly uh, exhaling, kiying as you're executing all these techniques. Right, the idea is you're always ex exhaling and you're always kiy ki upping. Right, uh, so this is fairly new. Right, uh, but again, the premise is I see all of them. I'm going to kind of use that long running ki up in order to first of all bolster my energy maybe intimidate, although that's really secondary to everything else, uh, but also just kind of get yourself in the fray, uh, kind of scatter them a little bit, and once you have them scattered, then you're going to start kind of moving all over the place, right? Um, so let's take a look at, again, uh, maybe a few ideas behind that long key up. There are a few ways we can interpret this, right? So um, if it's mostly for intimidation, you're probably going to want a little more of a bloodlust roar kind of idea. Uh, which isn't actually good for your, uh, your vocal cords. Again, you want longevity, right? Um, now, if you're just looking for that good, like, long key up, again, working on your endurance, that's going to sound a little more operatic 
as opposed to, again, like a grinding AR, right? So it's not like a movie style AR, right? It's going more of a, again, longer, kind of like more, you know, deep chested Kia. Uh, so I, I might give a few examples. Uh, we'll find out exactly how hoarse I'm going to be uh, after this. So uh, the first example is going to be the more, more operatic run. So this is going to be something that's a little bit better for uh, longevity, right? So if you're going through your form quite a few times, and this is also an idea of just working on uh, how you should feel like you're breathing throughout a form anyway, right? Because the general idea is if I'm in combat with you, I'm only exhaling. I'm only inhaling when we're in defense. I'm kind of have my distance. So if I'm in combat with you, I should be always exhaling. I should have this certain kind of tightness in my chest, uh, which is going to be very similar to the first version I'm going to show you. Again, the more operatic uh, key up. Uh, versus a more theatrical, a little more um, intimidation. I guess we'll find out how intimidating it is. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look at those two different kinds of key up. So those were two different variations, right? So you can probably tell um, the, the different kind of thing going on, right? So the first one is kind of just it's more for you, right? So the idea is you're just like, kind of getting your, again, your diaphragm all set up for, again, striking and striking fear, allegedly, uh, versus the other ones a little bit more kind of like aggression kind of thing. Uh, now, I've talked about uh, the way you key up um, in past videos and stuff like that, but uh, the general idea is you want to have something that almost like, again, you want something that can uh, last a long time. Now I know Kiyop have other meanings in other martial arts, right? Uh, so for example, uh, I know some schools kind of have their own way of Kiyoping, um, as well as some uh, styles have their own way of Kiyoping. Uh, Musashi, um, so again, in the Book of Five Rings, uh, has his own theory about the different kinds of Kiyop, which are all kind of interesting. Uh, this will be closer to his first version, so the idea of entering combat, again, getting yourself psyched up, there is the key up that's in the middle, which is a little bit more of the kind of like that shorter And the very last one is kind of like the, the end of the combat, kind of letting everyone know you survived. Uh, so this is more the first type. This is the idea of you kind of like, kind of like powering up your, your, your pals as well. Uh, so if you've ever also done this in, uh, again, other martial arts, or if you've done this during class, uh, the louder you key up and kind of like add your energy to uh, your class, the more energy seems to be abundant, right? So again, uh, then your peers and your, and your students and your master uh, starts to kind of get hyped up as well. Same kind of idea, right? Uh, so both of those key up uh, do the same kind of thing, at least with regard to that. Um, so try both of those, right? So they're, they're new uh, and it's a nice way to kind of try to do both, um, get an idea of, again, which one's more comfortable, which one is just giving you that sensation that you feel like you need. The second technique that I would like to, again, just take a look at, again, a small spotlight, is the one-handed neck strike. Now, we've done something similar-ish, so we've done some one-handed strikes in the past, right? Uh, but this one has a move that comes quite a few times, right? So again, this is gonna be also true in, uh, in reverse, and once again, the other two, so there might be a link there. Uh, but this one-handed, again, really long strike. Uh, this is also in Baga 4, so that's another one that I was thinking of. That one, one-handed, really long strike and reeling it back in in order to do uh, damage uh, closer to home. Um, the, the reason I like this, so, um, so Shimsung is allegedly the culmination of Sangsu. So Sangsu is sort of by definition a two-handed style, which you can still do one-handed moves with, but then it's like, all right, so most of the one-hand stuff we've done has been right-handed with the exception of uh, the seven uh, cut, so from form seven around the head and striking out this way. So it's kind of fun that kind of like twice the forms later, right, so form 13 instead of seven, we're doing this again, right, so this is actually moving uh, kind of against the grain a little bit, right? So in seven, like here, you can engage your whole body just to blast through. This is one you have to have a lot more finesse, right? It's almost like the, the dominance of it switches. So this has to be a long, precise strike. So it has to be powerful, but also has to be precise. 
So what I like about this is, yes, you've done one-handed. Yes, you've done left-handed. But the power, so the, the, the use of it switches. So in, in our, usually with our right hand, it's dexterous, right? So we do our thrusts. We do our, eventually, our parries and stuff like that. Uh, and before that, in seven, it was a power cut, which it should be, right? Your left hand is your power hand. But what I like about this one is it's still powerful, but now it's also your finesse hand. It's also trying to, again, reach out, just nick the jugular and get back in in order to do uh, something a little more complex, a little more powerful uh, going forward. And the last thing that I would like to, again, consider, uh, and this makes it unique as far as I know, um, so again, there might be something uh, in Genbeck or beyond Genbeck that does do this a little bit more, uh, but if my, <laughs> unless my brain is uh, highly malfunctioning, we usually don't use our scabbard uh, that much, right? Uh, so Shimsung is unique in that sense, right? Uh, so like three quarters of the way through, we start here and we start drawing it out, right? We actually engage and we actually use the scabbard in order to strike, in order to block, in order to kind of, again, deflect as I thrust someone. As usual, can we retcon? Now, obviously the idea without breathing, absolutely, right? Uh, so in fact, this is also a drill that I've seen, uh, again, higher ranking people uh, go through, is as, as you're constantly exhaling the form, you can do a ki right, so, or key up. Uh, you can do a key up as you do guang cha peggy, right, so the light cut. You can go through it again, as you go through basics. Uh, this is a nice way to, again, engage you know, your core, uh, because again, that's the same kind of thing that you should be doing regardless. You can actually go through uh, each of your forms, so between defenses, you should be constantly exhaling. Try to see if you can do constant exhalation, constant key up uh, between defenses. Uh, you might actually note that form one is actually one of the hardest because there aren't that many defenses. Um, but this is something that you can retcon. It's not canonical, uh, but that mentality absolutely is. Now the other two were more, again, unique to Shimsung, right? So you don't use your scabbard in that way um, in any other form as far as my brain is remembering. Uh, again, you, you still do use the scabbard, right? So you do use it to pull it back and pull back, uh, push it back in uh, as you, you know, chuck gum and palto and all that fun stuff. But we don't really use it to, again, equal and opposite that much. Now that said, you can take that idea and apply it to your open hand, right? Uh, so for example, uh, you can imagine if you had your scabbard and you're kind of, again, actually we do the same idea, right? So if we're here and we do our thrust, right? So this is our scabbard, this is our sword. We can do the same thing again with our open hand. Our open hand can still do the same kind of idea. Now, if you want to think of it this way, and again, hopefully this won't sound boogie boogie, um, but thinking about, again, that energy or that, that pressure you can apply in your hands and your fingers can be the same kind of idea. It should still be able to do something different uh, than your sword hand. Um, now, if you've seen uh, some more Chinese styles, right? Uh, so, for example, with broadsword, I like to have a here. With a straight sword, I like to have again that, that flourish. It's the same idea, right? So being able to use your, uh, your, your, uh, your off hand, if you want to call it that, uh, to augment what you're doing uh, with, your other, with your actual sword hand. Uh, so that is something you can wreck on. It's, it's a bit of a stretch, right? Uh, as is maybe the idea of that left-handed finesse and powerful cut, right? Now you can obviously still do that, right? So for example, as we go through form seven, we can not only have that drop, powerful cut, we can still have that finesse aiming for where we want to go. Like in my interpretation, actually hitting the back of the knee before you keep going with the form. But you can add that finesse aspect uh, to your left hand as well. Um, so as, <laughs> as you can probably imagine from my change in tone, so tr again, try all of these again as you train. So think about these concepts, contemplate them, Again, retcon them as far as you can, add them to your uh, current repertoire of ideas, and just so keep training, right? Keep training, uh, stay safe, and stay humble. I don't.